So Ulrich, where do you see journalism being in 15 to 20 years or where should it be? I can say where it shouldn't be. It, it shouldn't just uh, go on doing what, uh, what we are doing now because that is, uh, that is not leading journalism and society into uh, uh, places where we, where we want to be. Uh, it, has, it has led to polarization and uh, mistrust. I sincerely do hope that journalism is an essential part of uh, people's lives, uh, of, of society, that journalism uh, come to its senses and realizes that uh, there's a market for and a need for um, journalism that is passionate, which is trusted, um, which is nuanced, fact-based, um, uh, and forward-looking. How do we get there? We get there mainly uh, and, and firstly uh, by uh, being critical uh, not only to everybody in any other industry, but to ourselves, which is the most difficult thing. But that's what, in, in order to change something, you have to realize that something that something is wrong. We have to realize uh, what the incentive structures in our industry has been and where that has led uh, journalism, where, where that led society and the, the public debate. And, and it, because you can't start losing weight until you dare looking in the mirror without clothes on and, and see that it doesn't really look good. You, you, have, you have to shape up a little bit. And we need to do that. We need to shape up a little bit and understand that uh, why, why we're here and uh, how, how we need to change to, uh, to be a better version of ourselves because society needs journalism. So uh, the difficulty is, what do we have to change to in order to have a form of journalism that is viable and trusted in 15 to 20 years? Yeah, can, can I tell you, sometimes it's easier uh, talking about other industries. Let's look at the food industry. In the late 70s, early 80s, hippies around the world ran around, looked at the way food was being produced, how animals were being treated in the stables, how we use chemicals uh, producing food. And the incentive structures in the food industry was produce as much as possible, as fast as possible, as cheap as possible. And the product you gave people were not really, really good. So they started and being ridiculed in the process, trying to say, can we produce in a different way? And the organic movement started that, this, the idea of sustainable food production. I think we can learn from that. And I think we need sustainable <laughs> organic journalism, if you might call it that. You might be ridiculed in the beginning, but you're on the right path. So where does your constructive news concept fit into that? It's, it's a, it's a, I chose the word constructive because I, we have been talking about quality journalism and better journalism for decades. It hasn't really gotten us anywhere. So we need a new vocabulary. And constructive means having a beneficial purpose. And you could ask, doesn't all journalism have a beneficial purpose? And the, the truth is, no, it's not. Sometimes we produce it just to get people's eyeballs. We produce it, try to produce journalism as any other product, produce as much as possible, as fast as possible, and as cheap as possible. And it is had very bad consequences for polarization. People get a screwed up picture about the world. Um, people distrust politics, they distrust, and, and it leads to uh, a very harsh tone in the public debate. And it's not because we intended that. It's not because somebody planned for that, but that's, that's the consequence. And constructive journalism is a way of talking about changing that mindset. The, the difficulty is that the publishers are going to say, but we, we know how to run our business and it's a very tough business we're in. And so we don't want to change too much. I, I, I disagree. If you have a quality uh, news organization, quality newspaper, who by heart think we want to do good for society, we think trust is important, we think uh, decent journalism is important, um, there are ways of, I mean, it, it is not a, it's not a completely revolution. I mean, we should still uncover problems in society, but our, our focus has been uncover problems in society 
full stop, and then move on to another problem and another problem and another problem. And we think that's the essence what we should do in, in quality journalism. And the problem for that is if we never ask the questions that none of us, the two of us learned in journalism schools, which is called now what and how. I mean, now we're documenting there's something wrong. What should we do about it? And asking the question, if we have a problem in Adelaide, have they had the same problem in Canberra and what did they do to solve it? Or in New Zealand or in Thailand or in Netherlands, what did they do to solve it? And can we learn from that? The key thing any news organization should do is to go out on the street and ask three simple questions to people. And we know what they will answer, right? The first question is, excuse me, sir, do you need more news? Second question, do you need faster news? Third question, do you need more information? And we know what people will answer. They will say, no, I don't, don't need more. I don't need faster. I don't need more information. I'm drowning in it. I need somebody to clean it up. Right. So currently we have some very big publishers like the New York Times and the, and the Guardian, they're global. Then we have some mid-size and in that I'd include Australia's Sydney Morning Herald, The Age, and the Australian and the Daily Telegraph and the Herald Sun. And then we have some smaller niche publications that cater for very specific markets. So there's business newsletters or um, cynical newsletters or comedy newsletters or sporting online newsletter, online publications and, and so on. Where do you see, how do you see that changing in the next 15, 20 years? I think we will see uh, uh, a move towards uh, two tendencies. Uh, one is uh, very, very big global uh, news companies, um, <clears throat> which uh, can be uh, get access to audiences uh, because they have a global language, they have a global brand. Um, you can talk about the New York Times, you can talk about the Guardian um, and, and uh, organizations like this. Um, and, and then you will see another turn where, where you, these verticals, we, very niche, it can be newsletters, it can be a new site, focusing on a very, very specific thing. Uh, the, the idea of a news organization uh, has been that we sell full packages. You have to read it all, uh, or you have to buy it all, just, just by the fact you're not reading uh, more than one tenth of it. That is going down the drain now. And between them, the very, very niche, very, very small oriented, and the very global big things who have the generic thing, including that, the, pop, the public funded public service companies, because they will be extremely important to glue everything together now. So you'd be a supporter of organizations like Australia's ABC and PBS in the United States and the BBC? I think that the idea of public service will be crucial for our democracies in the future, which also places a huge responsibility of people working for these public service companies, understanding the importance they have, the responsibility they have. And with that, I mean, really to go to work every day with both eyes and not only with the eye that looks for stories that supports their own way of seeing the world leading to a huge uh, mistrust in, in journalism and public service media, not only among polit politicians, uh, but, but also in, in the general public. Concluding in, in, in to your question, public service companies will be extremely important because the idea that the market itself can, can make sure that this is happening um, is, 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 is not true. Um, you can see that commercial companies, uh, if, if it's a market running it, so, I don't want I don't want public service to go there. I need public service to be above all that and really be a place where people can turn to and expect to get the best obtainable version of the truth. Ulrich, thanks for the early start for us. Thank you very much.